Welcome to My on Mondays, an explorative approach to the possessive my through narratives, art, and sound. Each Monday brings a new creation and unique perspective. My on Mondays is brought to you by Ming Studios, a contemporary art space and international artist residency program dedicated to the exhibition, experience, and exploration of arts and culture. Along with exhibiting artists from around the world, Ming also serves the community by hosting innovative programs including performances, workshops, screenings, readings, artist talks, and other cultural activities. For more information or if you'd like to participate in Mayan Mondays, you can visit our website at mingstudios.org. Hello and welcome to the 115th episode of Maya on Mondays. Today we have two featured artists giving us part two of our theme, My Mother, My Father, Myself. From Calvin Pineda we have My Mother's Pronouns. Calvin makes music, poetry, and theater with an eye towards the whimsical, pedestrian, and spiritual. They're from Boise, Idaho, and have studied at the College of Western Idaho, the Eugene O'Neill National Theater Institute, and Bard College. They're a theological seminary graduate and a three-time attendee of the American Numismatic Association Summer Seminar. Their most recent albums were released on September 8th, and What We Shall Wear, an undergraduate gender meditation and zines from the duplex nursing home, recorded into a discount eBay cassette deck. They perform with their band as Calvin Pineda and the Antacids, and are one half of the musical essay podcast duo Sage Country Fragments. They enjoy cats, roadside attractions, and mint ice cream. The second piece comes from Daphne Elizabeth Stanford. Since 2012, Daphne has hosted the poetry show on KRBX Radio Boise. She holds a B.A. in English from Reed College, an M.A.T. in Secondary English Education from University of Iowa, and an M.F.A. in Creative Writing from the University of Oregon. Her work has been published in Cesura, Linger Post Press, The Monarch Review, The Cabin, Writers in the Attic, Cliterature, All My Relations, Rabid Oak, Willowa Journal, and Reservoir. Her chapbook, The Inevitable Surfacing of Bodies, was published in 2019 from Dancing Girl Press. For this episode, she reads her poem, Dust, about her mother, Rosa. The first time my mother and I talked about my pronouns was in a Goodwill parking lot. She's on Instagram now. In fact, I think she might have been on Instagram before I was. We've always been eccentrically parallel, she and I. She's been an essayist and memoirist since she was in her 20s, and I started an essay and memoir podcast in my early 20s. But she kept her work to herself, and I vomited mine onto Spotify at the first available opportunity. She tells me I'm an inspiration to her, but the tone of all my writing can be pretty directly traced back to the emails and blog posts that she read aloud to me in the early 2010s. She's funny and incisive and earnest all the things that I want to be. My mother was raised as a woman in America's Mormon belt. Her entire life was mapped out for her by the time she was 12, and yet, even at a young age, she could feel her personhood straining against the seams of her less-than-idyllic LDS household. She wanted to be goth, but her mother wouldn't have it. She wanted to be a singer, but no one encouraged her. She wanted to write novels, but instead she studied general humanities at Brigham Young University, Idaho, until she got married and started pumping out kids, her words. She always stops just shy of saying she regrets this. My mother is attuned to the strange machinations of the universe and her place within them. Still, my mother's life, like most people's lives, is full of missing dreams Ambitions like milk carton kids, advertised, mourned, and forgotten. But she's on Instagram now. She follows meme a day pages and hot gay ballerinas with the Paris Opera, and, as I learned in the Goodwill parking lot, apparently me. I noticed you changed your bio pronouns, she said as we parked. It was my last full day in Boise before crossing the country for school. In preparation for this move, I had indeed changed my bio pronouns, he, they. 
My mom and I have a devastatingly honest relationship these days. It wasn't always that way, but lately we've come to realize that we're on near-identical spiritual journeys. Both of us left the LDS church within a couple years of each other, and have begun writing about ourselves and our parents in ways both direct and understanding. We've become obsessed with most of the same artists through our enthusiastic exchange of media. I gave her Fun Home, she gave me Amanda Palmer, I gave her Ezra Furman, she gave me Maurice Sendak. When I told her I was polyamorous, her response was, well, just tell me how many plates to set for Thanksgiving. In some mother-child relationships, there's no room to hide oneself. In mine, there's sort of no need. So I'm sitting with my mom in the Goodwill parking lot, as a guy in a blue apron loads broken bikes onto a freight pallet, and when my mom asks her next question, I answer more or less without hesitation. I don't mean this in that way, she says, but why? Why the pronoun change? It feels right, I say. It's really not a huge deal. But how do you know that you feel non-binary, she asks. There's no judgment in her voice, just curiosity, and something else I can't quite place. I don't know, I say. I've never really looked in the mirror and thought, ah, yes, that is a, a man. You know? Makes sense, she said. I mean, yeah, it makes sense. There's a short silence. You know, she says, I think if I had been born a decade earlier, I would have come out as non-binary. Oh, I say. I just didn't know it was an option. Not really. And my mother would have killed me, but I think maybe I still would have. Now, as a good NB, I never waste a chance to evangelize. Well, I say, there's still time. I can use gender-neutral pronouns for you if you want. I guess, she says, unbuckling and opening the passenger door. But I'm... I'm just so tired. My mother will always be my mother, in the same way that I will always be their son. As far as we're concerned, these aren't really gendered terms. In public, they refer to me as her kid, which is perfect. Gendered respect, with just the right amount of ironic detachment. My son goes to Bard College is an uninteresting sentence. My kid goes to this batshit art school in the mountains somewhere. That has verve. But I'm still their son, and they're still my mom. We don't talk about their gender very much, but in my head, I, they, them, my mom. Because the world is full of nervous kids and their milk carton genders. And if we are to stand against the binary nightmare, it's vital to remember that our parents, in all their complexity, never really stop being those kids. This is Daphne Stanford, and I'm going to read a poem called Dust, but my mother, Rosa. Dust. Mama's vacuum echoes from the church balcony down to red carpet below. I push through apex shadows. Spirits permeate my bones, laugh into my eyes. The spectral sanctuary air says, remember, dust, everything. Moon streams through stained panes of glass. I clutch a rag streaked gray as bone, smooth it over the stiff shoulders of the pews, pass the cloth over them. Dust collects again. Mama, are you done yet? I glimpse a yellow moon-like flash of glove, scouring the toilet. She wipes her forehead on her sleeve, bustles us into brightly lit classrooms to read until she's finished mopping empty hallways. She carries bags stretched full, heaves them over into giant dumpsters before we drive south down the forehead of the moon that follows, casting a map of ghost light home. Although the moon's only following the 101 south, I imagine Mama's following the moon, that its lunar eyes and mouth are leading us into space, that moon dust replaces dirt in this place, that we will feel with our hands the moon's cratered face, grasp handfuls of the dust, and allow the fine particles to sift through ungloved fingers, sparkling and luminescent as only heavenly matter can be. On the moon, we will examine the origins of our hands, our faces.
We're glad you could join us today and look forward to bringing you more episodes in the Mondays to come. Thank you.